tonight's been the first face-to-face -face ICU forum, um, which we've been doing online now for just over 12 months because of uh, obviously COVID, and um, we haven't been able to do it face-to-face. -face. We find that it really helps people recover psychology-wise. Tonight we opened it to patients and family members as well, because um, not over the patient goes through it all, um, but also the family member also goes through it as well. Um, I think it's important to put everyone together in the same room and mingle, <laughs> meet and mingle. We've got people in the room today that have been from like two years ago and we've got some people that have only been discharged for two months and it's nice because they can see how much they're growing yeah. can't they and they give, it gives them kind of hope. The way they've integrated mm. this evening as well yeah. has been amazing we didn't expect the turnout that we got. Yeah. Lovely to see them sharing the phone yeah. numbers yeah. and you know that they'll carry on this outside of it and that's that's what it's about bringing it's them a special together bond, isn't it? and then special they, they bond. will support each other. Yeah. I think there were some people even saying that they'd kept in contact and spoke to people at the time but had never actually met them face to face. Yeah. To have this environment, to meet them face to face, was really nice for them. I think a lot for probably us, the staff, patients and the relatives, um, it's getting an idea of what other people have gone through because obviously we can only say from a professional point of view kind of what's gone on but it's the, the patients themselves that have gone through it so them talking to each other having that peer support we found it from the online ones that originally didn't we that people create then these kind of closer bonds with each other talking through their experiences and knowing it's not just them that have been through it. It has been very hard to see the patients grow through it all um, but this rehab service and seeing that the survivors and the way that they're progressing and it has been really rewarding to us as staff um, and to the relatives themselves and the patients, seeing other people and how much they have progressed themselves. So it is really rewarding, but it has been also very difficult to see that, that people do have to go through the critical illness process and then obviously have to get through the rehab side of it as well. I think it's nice to share it with, um, with the staff as well. So. They like having the yeah. story shared, don't they? Yeah. And, and it's so yeah. nice and it gives them, it really boosts staff morale. Yeah. Seeing that end goal, isn't yeah. it? Because yeah. as you were saying before, when you were just in ITU solely, mm -hmm. you don't see them as, as they have got better once yeah. they've been discharged. So it's nice to see that when they come walking through the door in clinic, yeah. isn't it? When the last time we maybe saw them, they were really struggling just to transfer. Sometimes we can't even recognise them, can we? From an ITU point of view, you don't see that straight away. Um, but seeing it from on the wards and then supporting them in the community as well, it's, it's really, really rewarding, isn't it? It's yeah. Yeah. The main thing that we do is learning from patient experiences and a lot of the changes that we've made um, to improve the services has gone by patient feedback. There's more to life with survival and rehabilitation from being critically ill. You, you are learning back to basics, learning to walk again, talk again, eat again. Um, it really is hard work and, and to see someone to go through that um, very emotional um, but very privileged to be part of their journey.